Hello, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, your guide through the ARRL license manuals. The videos in this course follow the manuals section for section. You can get the ARRL license manuals from the source listed below the video. After you watch the video, dig into the corresponding section of the book, study the associated questions, and then come back for the next video. Every amateur radio operator is assigned a call sign. It used to be that the call sign went with the equipment and the uh, operating authority went with the operator, but it's all just kind of mushed together right now. So I'm KE0OG regardless of where I go. So let's talk about call signs. In call signs there is a so-called prefix and a suffix. The prefix for my call is KE0, okay, and the suffix is OG. Now let's take a look at some call signs. These are actual QSL cards that I've received, some of them quite recently. Here's one from KI4UKA. The prefix is KI4, the suffix is UKA, and this comes from uh, Tennessee, that's in the uh, four call area. Here's one from Oklahoma. Uh, N5XE, so that N5 is the prefix, XE is the suffix. Now one thing to note is that a call like this um, with a, a one, it's called a one by two because the N is a one and the two is the number of uh, letters that you have over there. So you get one letter, uh, a number, and two um, more letters. These call signs are all used up, so you can't get any unless you do it as a, a vanity call sign. Here is N4CUS. Now N4CUS was at one time a technician call, uh, but they ran out of all of those. So you won't get a one by three. Um, but this guy got one and held it. Okay. The call signs start with either an N or a W or with A plus another letter. Uh, the United States doesn't have all the A's. It's uh, like A. So you might get a 2 by 2 call sign that starts with an A. Here's one here, KH6CN. Now the KH indicates Hawaii. KH6CN is operating from Washington, which uh, would mean that he had lived at one time in Hawaii, got a Hawaiian call, and then came to the United States, and he keeps his call sign, which you can do. You can go anywhere in the country and operate that way. Here's one from K0ACP. Again, a K and the ACP uh, would be a one by three call sign. Here's WB9IIV. This would be um, a general class call sign and is a two by three. These days you're going to get a, a two by three call. Uh, here's uh, one from another country, Canada in this case, VE7NBQ. VE is Canada. Uh, it's in the 7th district in Canada. Uh, NBQ is the suffix. And uh, you'll find that with a lot of the uh, uh, people abroad, uh, you can tell what country they're in by the first or the first plus the second letter prior to the call. Now what's really interesting is that they ran out of these prefixes and so some countries have a number, a letter, then a number, then a suffix. Like I think it's Sayer is uh, a nine in a Z, uh, the way it starts out there. I'd have to double check that. Uh, so you can see that uh, there's uh, lots of different ways that call signs can come about. Now what happens is that you will get a call sign in a class based on your license that you've just passed. When you upgrade from uh, tech to general, you have the opportunity of getting a different call sign. Very, very few people do that. They keep their call signs. Now my first call sign was WN7AIU and the N meant novice. It would have become uh, probably wa 7 uh, AIU, but uh, when I passed my general, I was in California, so I got WB6GBT. And when I uh, upgraded to advanced, I went ahead and got an advanced call sign, uh, KD6SH. 
then when I came here to Colorado, still as an advanced, I wanted a zero call sign because I live in the zero district and got KE0OG. Now I upgraded to extra, so I could have gotten an extra class call sign, but uh, I like KE0OG. I've been published under it. Um, I don't want to change my call sign, so I'm just keeping it. It's an advanced class call sign. There is no more advanced class anymore, and I'm using it as an extra. Now the call districts that you see in the book, uh, the map with the uh, uh, numbers for various uh, sections in there, uh, don't uh, really mean as much as they used to. When you live in a call district and you get your call sign, you will get one with that number in there. But you might move, like that guy who moved from Hawaii to Washington, and you can keep your call sign. Now it used to be that if you went in another call sign, you had to sign with that district. For example, I could say uh, if I were in California, I could do KE0OG Portable 6. Um, and some people do that occasionally, but it's rare. Uh, it's definitely not common. You'll get a, a call sign uh, out of Group D, which includes the uh, technician licensees, uh, and any leftover novice licensees, and believe it or not, there's still some leftover uh, or a club license. Now, when you upgrade from technician to general, you will have the opportunity uh, to operate immediately after you get your CSCE at the VE session. What you will do is you will use your normal call sign and say slash AG. And what that does, it means that yes, you've got a technician call sign. If they look you up in the database, it's technician. But the slash AG tells people that you've, you've passed the test, you're as good as a general right now, and uh, you can operate that way until the, the call sign uh, comes in the mail. There are uh, special event stations. Um, I've had the opportunity to operate some of these. I think I was a W5 uh, w uh, BSA. I was a Boy Scouts of America a Jamboree, and they had a special call sign for that. Um, you can also, if you want, get what's called a vanity call sign. A vanity call sign is one not normally assigned to you. Say, for example, your father has been a ham radio operator all his life, and he's got a really cool call sign. And you can ask to have that call sign assigned to you. And you can have that call sign assigned to you, providing that, if you're a technician, it's a Class D call sign. Uh, if you're amateur extra, you can pick up any of the calls because you're entitled to all of them. But you need to understand your privileges need to match what the call sign says, uh, which can get some people uh, hung up. Thanks for following along with the videos and the book. After you've studied this section in the manual and are satisfied you understand the questions and their answers, come back here for the next video. The ARRL is the National Association for Amateur Radio, and I urge you to join, even if you don't have your license yet. That way you get QST, the League's monthly magazine full of articles for beginners and veterans alike, or you can choose On the Air, a magazine designed specifically for those new to amateur radio. Until we next meet, 73.